Okay, this will be a, a quick game against National Master Bruce Bow. He's white. And again, I'm uh, National Master Ruben Ondangan. This was played in the Antelope Valley Chess Championship match, game three. National Master Bruce Bow is a contemporary of uh, Bobby Fischer. Uh, they were great friends, actually. And I, was, I have the honor of playing this man, Bruce Bow, on February 1 of 2013. And the game went, he was white, d4, knight of six, c4, e6. Now uh, the previous game my opponent played knight f3, knight c3. This time, National Master Bruce Bow opted for knight f3. I played b6, played g3, and he played bishop a6. All of these are theory class, or part of the uh, book line. It's still uh, acceptable in theory. Here, the, cr the main line runs b3. My opponent played something else, knight b, d2. Uh, special specialty of Randall Hall. That's what he plays. Randy. That's what he plays. So, uh, that's his specialty. So. After knight bd2, bishop b4, he played queen b3, an immediate attack on the bishop. Uh, here, there was a, earlier we studied about asking the question to the bishop by a pawn. This time, uh, white asked the question to the bishop by a piece or a queen. So there's two ways to actually ask the question to the bishop, by a pawn or by a piece. So here, after queen b3, what should you do? C5, C5 is playable. However, uh, between pawn and piece, I play the piece. Knight C6. Now, now, class here, you will notice that in my games, and it's very, it's very evident by now that you see me harmonizing all my forces so early on, developing them so early in the game, bringing them out as soon as I can because uh, an active piece can only cause problem, not the one that are at home, okay, or under original square. When you play active moves like this, it causes a lot of problem in the position, especially for your opponent. So after knight c6, let's see the continuation real quick. Uh, he played bishop g2, black castles. Okay, principle of opening play achieved, control the center, this time indirectly. Develop the pieces rapidly. Queenside forces, you notice, are out early on. And the king side. And castle into safety. Three principle of the game. Now we are heading in the middle game. And I want you to pay attention to threats, captures, and checks. And especially the knight moves. These are dangerous pieces. Threats, captures, and checks. Okay? Uh, here, after castle, he castle as well. The difference of this game and the previous one I've shown earlier. On the first game, we never allowed our opponent to even castle into safety. Here, the game is about equal and even, and National Master Bruce Bow know what he's doing. He said, I will castle to avoid any kind of problem, the right thing to do in this type of position. What should we play here? Hit d5, the center, c4, because of the bishop on a6, there is an x-ray on e2. And you will see that you maximize the potential of all your pieces so early in the game. Everybody following this? Very strong move, d5. Okay. After d5, he capture. How should you recapture? Now, you want to capture with the knight, bringing more forces, but that's actually a problem. Because uh, this bishop on g2 will suddenly find itself with no opponent on the diagonal with the knight there. You need a pawn to blockade the bishops, uh, minimize the bishop's strength on g2. So the correct capture here class is pawn takes. Now, what did we gain on that? It maintains an eye on the bishop. It gives black an open diagonal, uh, open pile. It gives you e4 for the knight later on. And the pieces are still very active. So after uh, ed5, he played queen a4, attacking the bishop and the knight. Double attack. Uh, one of the elements of uh, elements of combination, pins, forks, 
double attack, discover attack, double check, discover check. Here, white attacks two of our forces. How should we react? The wrong move is knight b8. That's what we call undeveloping your piece. Because it leaves not only, it protects this bishop, but it leaves this bishop unattended. But there's only one move. Bishop to b7 protects the knight. And now we are on this diagonal. We cannot capture the pawn earlier. We wanted to, but we can't because of the knight hanging on c6. So bishop b7. Played a3, asking the question in a delayed form. Now here, I want you to pay attention of what I mentioned earlier, that when you brought out your bishop early in the game, you're willing to part with it. Here, there is an option not to part with the bishop because uh, you don't gain anything from capturing the knight. Okay? Not only you surrender the bishop, pair for black, but you help your opponent to develop after bishop takes, he captures back. So you're helping the enemy. So in other words, uh, when you capture uh, the piece forces exchange, you make sure that you gain something in return. Okay? If you don't gain anything in return, then that is a bad exchange. The correct move here is bishop d6. Creating a future attack on h2 within the vicinity of the king. So after bishop d6 here, he played b4, planning to develop the bishop on b2. Not to mention a5, gaining space. So we play a6, preventing the idea. Okay. After a6, bishop b2. And here, black found a move that is uh, very strong. We call this another form of x-ray. Anybody? Discovery of the queen here. Uh, queen e8. Okay. The idea is, this is the plan. Knight captures. The queen is undefended. Queen captures, but before we capture uh, <coughs> the queen, we have knight takes knight check. For example, queen takes. Our intermezzo or our in between move is not capturing the queen immediately, but check. capturing with check. Therefore, uh, black won a pawn. Okay? Go ahead. Now we lost a queen. <laughs> so <laughs> I almost played that too. But uh, so queen e8. We create a problem, an x-ray. There's a pawn here. Okay. After queen e8, he played queen c2, getting out of that dangerous discovery. Now here. Why does white always want to checkmate me on h7? I don't know. So I said, let me just stop it before somebody shows up there uninvited on g5. You know, they do that a lot of time. Party crashers, right? So here, after h6, rf e1. Now, how should we proceed? Our strength lies on e4. So knight e4. Knight takes, d takes e4. So white is happy with this position because he can attack this three times. One, and after knight d2, two and three under attack. He's happy for a moment. However, we have a very disturbing move on our disposal. Remember, our pawn already reached beyond the fourth rank. It is a, some sort of advantage. Here, it is an advantage of space. But the pawn can also create, be used as a battering ram in the position. Push, destroyed, white's position suddenly. Opens the bishop and who will ever open it to uh, effectively will win the game. This create a very strong disturbance. And after e3, 
knight to c4 e takes f to check see that uh, the career of that pawn reaches from d7 d5 e4 e3 even f2 but it was almost uh, almost became a queen however it was captured but what it created is a problem the king suddenly find itself in the open and these are the things that I'm watching in the position when my king my opponent's king are suddenly compromised I start looking for ways to drum up some kind of immediate sweep type of attack in the position and so let's see how I proceeded here after king takes f2 I said there is an x-ray with the rook here and that gives you a clue on my next move f5 so here it's so easy suddenly to find moves when you have ideas in mind just pinpoint the location of two important pieces on the board the king and the queen your pieces will just uh, fall in the right squares here for example the king on f2 is right there within the line range of fire of that rook, that cannon on f8 so opening up the cannon's uh, viewpoint or pathway will really cause a lot of problem for white here after uh, a pipe rac1 i played rac8 because it's planning to capture here and penetrate on the c pile probably not a very accurate move but i believe is in the at the moment it's good enough okay to uh, while i'm uh, contemplating my own type of attack i also have to be careful of my opponent's uh, activity so, you know, control the position. Play knight e5. What should you do? He's trying to take advantage of the pin. But class, I have this. Knight takes e5. And to his horror, he realized that he cannot really capture the bishop. Because if he captures this bishop, what's going to happen? You have knight g for check, and after king here, you have a queen e3 and the mate. No, I see no? Okay, that's those are the things that I look in a position. Okay, the compromised position of the king. So whether he like it or not, he has to capture this knight. Pawn takes knight. Now we have a chance to exchange bishop. Bishop takes, king takes. Now a fresh type of weakness shows up in the board. Not only the king is compromised, but the lack of bishop white square cover for a uh, white king will spell disaster on the light square in the vicinity of the white king. So after uh, he never captured bishop takes g2, instead he captured this pawn this bishop I mean look at that the game become from uh, from problematic to really uh, crazy so after on text because he wants to create what he has he has this trump in the position the C pile control and yes the pawn can be taken but I want to save the bishop If I come if here, take, he oh, take yeah. I have a check, oh. and then you lost, black lose the bishop. Oh. So there is an intermezzo. Be careful with those kind of things, and you get excited immediately when you saw something like that. But upon deeper inspection, it actually backfires. We have to save this bishop first. So bishop e4 gains a tempo. Okay, queen c3 creates. This guy is a national master, by the way, so he, he will not give up the fight for no. There's a mate in one. And again, attack and counterattack in chess is very important. Although you are focused on attacking, you have to pay attention to the defense. Attack and defense, defense and attack, okay? You can't only focus on one particular idea. Have to balance it out. So, after uh, queen c3, what should you play? Rf7. Very good. 
Now he captured the pawn. He said he was happy here because he is the one who had a pawn that is one square away from being promoted into a queen. Can't the rook just take? Well, but if the rook takes it, then you have a rook on the seventh rank and post. Well, if you take, take it, it take again, it. there is a, a check again and then exchange, exchange. But then the rook will stay on the seventh rank. And that's always dangerous. Yes, yeah, so here. It looks very dangerous at first, but the game will be over soon after RF7, DC7. Remember this pawn earlier? Open it up. Destroy the cover on your opponent's king. Okay, F4 was played, King G1. So remember I mentioned about the lack of light square bishop? It creates some sort of light square weakness. And you have to envision, visualize a checkmating pattern based on the bishop. What do you need to create a checkmate? You need a queen somewhere here. That dictates your next move, which is? Um, queen d7. Very e good. Seven. Queen d7 or even e6 should be good enough. This is a threat. He played queen e5. The, now, Again, a, a move can be considered a strong or good move if it contains not only one idea. Black's queen d7 doesn't contain only the checkmate, and that was the main idea. However, the uh, other idea is to regain the pawn, the pawn that, is, that is on c7 that could become a problem if you just leave it alone. So, if he, goes to e5, so he played queen e5. You take the pawn with the queen. You don't want pawn, you want the king. So here, instead of. Uh, that was the, that was the other idea. Instead. This is under attack. You cannot play queen h3 immediately because the bishop is captured. Yeah. So you have to hold on and tell yourself, okay, he has a threat, my bishop. And um, suddenly... Queen e8, box that bishop up. Rook e e7. Rook e8 is bad move. Anybody? Why? Um, the pawn promotes. Pawn promotes. Pawn promotes. Or queen takes. Right? Queen takes rook and the pawn promotes. That's better. So, you have to play. You cannot leave the position of the rook and see it has to stay there to stop the pawn from queening. Rook e7 first. Attacks the queen, protects the bishop. Okay? That's a pretty good move. It's like an and here, he answered the question with also a question. He said, uh, you attack my queen, I will attack your queen as well. So, we cannot go to h3. Because the rook goes all the way to d8. Can we go to h3? Yeah. Yes, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but if the rook goes to d8, oh, then you take the pawn promotes. You take the so the threat here is much more important than capturing the rook. He cannot capture the rook. So what does he? What did he do here after queen h3? Rook d8 check. Then. What should? Then you, you have to take. You have to take with the you have to? No, you don't, you have, don't to. have to. H7, H7, H7. Just king h7. And now white has to worry on what to do here. Well, and therefore, finding no defense, he, has to take. he resigned actually in this game. So just in time, 30 minutes, 11.30. I hope that you guys enjoyed the lecture this morning. Two Nimso engine game, one uh, Queen's engine. So very good. Thank you.